Watch your work, and it's Thursday again. I'm sorry, I'm not getting to work. No, no, I was just at, at a Proby Best Media event, so uh, I had to restrain myself from saying, Power to the people! But uh, so I think that's a lot of that energy is in my head. So it's Watch Your Work with the Lobby of the Public Theater. It's Thursday, the 24th of October, one week away from Halloween. I hope you got your costume. What are you going to be? A character from a book that I'll be the only person who does what it is, but... Yeah, you might be. What are you going to be? I'm going to be Susan R. Parks. <laughs> I'm just going to be myself. Um, anyway, so, um, Watch Me Work is, is a, uh, a meta-theatrical free writing class. It's, I tell people, it's just like Shakespeare in the Park, except it's not Shakespeare and it's not in the park, but it is free. And it's also a it's also a uh, play, and we're going to do the action together, and we're going to do the dialogue together. The action is 45 minutes of us working together in the lobby of the public theater, and you guys who 
uh, might be watching this online can work uh, in here wherever you are, homes, offices, whatever. And um, then we will do the dialogue together, and, and you guys will ask me questions about your work and your creative process. Your emphasis on your work and your creative process. And any kind of work is cool to do, and any kind of questions about any kind of creative process uh, are welcome. So, so with that, oh, and if you want to tweet, because some folks who watch online like to tweet us questions, and Drew will tell us the address. Uh, it's at WatchMeWorkSLP, hashtag new play. At WatchMeWork, at SLP, hashtag new play, really? Okay. Hope you got that. If you don't, just send a smoke signal or a carry pigeon, and we'll get it, I swear. Okay, so we're going to set our...
about your work and your creative process and thank you Karen for giving me thank you that was so sweet thank you see what happens when you work chocolate it just appears that night mm. anybody have any yes long time writing prose, um, poetry, novels, short stories, and now I've been writing a play for the last year or so, and um, I just find that it's such a drastic way of an art form. I mean, in the novel you have chicken to track the first and third person, you have description, you have whatever you want, whereas in the play you have dialogue, page directions, and that's it. And it's um, so it's different, and I find it a lot harder. I wonder if you could just talk about uh, the difference in the how one used to translate it to what we have to have you been, you've been, I've been here a few times. You've looked remind me of your name. Everett. 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 So Everett has written lots of prose, novels, short stories. Am I getting it right? Right. Okay. So he's he's a writer, written a lot of novels and short stories, and now he's writing a play and he finds that it's different. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, because it's different, it's difficult, you know. You, you, you're experiencing like, wow, this is weird. Yeah. Where's my long pages of, you know, right, description that yeah, I get to? It can be stifling. It can be stifling? Yeah. To not have your description? Yeah, I mean, I'll sometimes write the entire scenes out in prose the way they might look just to have them there, and then I'll sort of pick out the play from them just, wow. to, just to have something. So, right, so he writes it out in prose, and then you pick out the play from that. Well, does that work? Is that, it seems like it might work. I, I mean, it has worked. Um, but then as I, as I move along into the play, I find that it, there's certain circumstances where it just doesn't seem to work because, I don't know, I guess just because when you, as you gain experience with the form, and with the fact of just writing dialogue, and I think about dialogue, that's all there is, and just kind of then um, from the background sort of vanishes. And so, um, while that's always the tool that I can pull out of my box, it's not necessarily the most, always the most apt tool to novels. Right, right, right. So your skills as a novelist, while they're useful, you can always pull them out of your pocket, are the most helpful things when you're writing a play. It's, yeah, I've written both, um, and they are different, and, but they're both enjoyable. And this is the thing, so, um, when you write a play, it might be helpful, and you might do this already, to imagine it on stage when you see it in your mind. Do you do, you do that? Can you see the characters? It might also be helpful to, and you might do this already, to act out your characters. Um, I mean, I'll speak, the, I'll speak what I've got allowed. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because if that's all you got, you know, that's all you're using, right? It might be really helpful. Sometimes in my head, I mean, I act it out without actually moving around at this point. But it's very helpful to act out the, the dialogue as much as you can, you know? And it's funny because in a novel, and this is a weird coincidence, I, am, I happen to be reading a novel that I haven't read in 10 years, which is a novel that I wrote. I haven't read it since it came out. And I'm like, oh, I think I'll reread it because it's been 10 years and I can't remember it. And I'm like, wow, there's so many words. You know, so many little words. Because in a novel, in my experience, you have to get, you know, you describe the seams on the cushion, right? Right? Okay. And in a play, you say red cushion like something you would find in the lobby of the public theater. Right. Right. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that will often result in something, wow, magically like that. Because it's a play. Here we are. The set designer has provided that for us. Right. So, well, but what I do when I write um, a novel is I just allow myself to get really detailed, knowing that the reader is going to do the casting and the set design and all that in your mind, right? But when, when you're doing a play, you know that you ultimately are responsible for picking out with the set designer those elements. I find it's really helpful to act it out, you know, as much as you can. And if you find that you're writing it out like a novel and you really want to write a play, just put that tool aside. It's, it's discipline. You have to put the tool aside, right? And just two people talking. Yeah, it's, it's a play. I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a play, but writing, it's just Great. that. I sometimes go back to that just as a passing around for something. I understand. I understand. And just keep going back to two, like if a scene is like a two-person scene, you know, two people talking, three people talking. They're just talking. Um, but is there a specific? I mean, I could go on and on. You know, the, the different. You just have to like die in it. You know, it's like I know. Do you get any solace from like Thornton? Uh, yeah, Thornton wrote Bridge of Samuel and Ray. He wrote. And you know all the great plays that he wrote, or Beckett wrote plays and novels. You know, there's a tradition of people who do both. And I think just imagine as much as you can, your play is on stage. The people are in front of you, just like this. Like visualize it playing out, visualize it as a Yeah, visualize it live on stage as much as you can. You know, a novel I sort of see when I write. You know, I, I kind of see it more like a a movie, sort of, yeah. you know, because I can see every little thing, and I describe every little thing. Does that get you unstuck when you find yourself stuck visualizing on stage? Oh, a play? Yeah. Well, I act it out. I sit around, I'm like, I'm trying to think of, you know, I like, I wrote a play, blah, 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 and, you know, the guy is, uh, he has a feather that he puts in his hat, and I walk around like this. And he's talking about his feather. And, you know, I do a lot of like walking around and acting like the people in my plays. Instead of sitting there and trying to think of what the story is, I try to get into the body of the character as much as possible. You know, so it's, and keep just keep throwing yourself into that that different way of writing. It'll come. And keep coming back because it's fun to have you, yeah. novelist, and where he's been infected by the theater book. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. To playwriting. It's really fun. And this is the part that I remember what you told me that. You know, you just told me, you know how to do this. It's, it's, you know how to write. Yeah, and I don't know about you, Carol, but your your playwriting style might be different from someone who just writes plays. You know what I mean? Because my novel writing style is different from someone who just writes novels. They're more like plays. You know, I mean, they're not plays, but they lean on that those, some of those conventions. You know? Yeah, people who read my stuff say that they can see the, the novel take that. Okay, so, and that's okay. You know, and, that, and that's, all, that's all right. So don't, you know, it's, it's okay if you lean on some of that or you employ some of those tools. But, but and, and you, the, thanks, Carol, for reminding me that you know how to do it. You actually do know how to do it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not always easy to keep that in mind. Yeah, but it's good to, you know, we're reminding you today, right, that you do know how to do this. Yeah. And also a reading place. If you, you know, I know you probably do already, but as many plays as you can consume is helpful also. Just to get your mind in that sort of, you know, like Shakespeare. Like Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm an actor, too, so. I... Oh, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Well, oh, but you know how to do this. Oh, stop. Oh, you still know how to do this. Okay, okay, okay. Who else? <laughs> stop. Yeah. He's an actor. He knows how to do this. Yeah. 
knows how to do this. You know how to do this. Oh, please. No, do you mind me? me? Oh. And uh, yeah, I was I was having trouble with this one character whether they should live or die. And you, you suggested to do just bullet points and have them die and see what that was like. So I, I set my time for every day and I uh, obsessed. <laughs> so then the next day, I did it, I did it every, uh, for about five days, and I found it changed every time. But um, last night, when I was looking at sort of the last iteration, there was a lot of walking around, trying to figure out. Uh, I realized that. There were points that didn't make sense for the whole plan, and I had to fix it. There, there were interstices which were not planned. So that was, it was a wonderful thing. So did he live or did he die? You had him die. Have him die. <laughs> he died. And so you wrote bullet points, several iterations of bullet points. Boom, 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 boom. Right, right. And how does it, do you have one? Iteration that feels like actually, um, like it's a, like it moves on its own, like you, it's not somebody, something you're dragging, you know, but it kind of can move on its own. <laughs> Last. Don't reread them. Don't reread them. 
you following your outline, right? Your bullet points. And then in the second day, you just go forward. Because the idea is to get finished. Not to like go back and like rewrite and make it perfect. Okay, so just go forward and see if you can get to the end of your play by next week. And we're going to check on quality, you know, and we won't scold you if the grammar is bad or if it doesn't make sense. Who cares? Your idea is to get to the end. Okay? Okay? So that's what you're going to do. Alright? And you have like two hours a day to write six pages, so that's totally doable, right? Okay. And just write, and if you like, think it's shitty, keep writing. And if you think it sucks, keep writing. Well, I'm describing myself, actually. That's what's great about this. Yeah, okay. Do you want? Do you want? Anybody else? It can be shitty, it can suck. Doesn't matter. You can make it better tomorrow. I do. I make it better tomorrow. Did you have a. No, you just. And I've actually got the script and I'm writing the synopsis. Yes. So any tips on the writing size? It's a screenplay. So then I have to produce a synopsis. Yes. Right. Right. Any tips on how I can extract kind of the essence of the story? I think the long line, okay. and then it's coming out to like two paragraphs, three paragraphs, one page. So you want to shorten it? You need one this long? I need, I need like a, a yeah, one, one or two paragraphs, and then like two pages. Right. Okay. So imagine the short. Which is harder for you, the short one or the long one? Uh, the longer one. It's harder. Yeah. Well, that's wow. What is because, okay, go ahead. Yeah, because uh, the story I kind of know some of the main beats. Right. And then it's it's coming up with the minor beats that I should include. Right. So the longer, so the short synopsis right now is how long? Have you done uh, that's literally just one line. That's just a long that's line. That's a long line. Yeah, okay. So I have that. Line. Okay. Yeah. Now you need like a two. Now I need like two or three paragraphs. Right. So can you imagine that you're pitching it? Would that help? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're, imagine the, you know, studio of people yeah. sitting there and you go, okay, this is a story about a guy, he's written a script already, right? And so he lives in New York, he's written a script, and he has to write this log line. Okay. So he goes around trying to think of it, right? So you're pitching it. What I could do is just record myself. Oh, yeah. You could record yourself. Yeah, and they have the technology. You have the technology. You're like a six million dollar man. Yes. Yes, I know. So you could kind of do it like that, and then you could listen to yourself and type yeah, it up, and then... Well, you're welcome. Yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna give that a well. And see if it works. Yeah, yeah. And if it doesn't, then you know, I'll try something. I'll be back then. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be back. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Satisfaction guarantee you earn your money back. So this is Watch for Work. Thanks for coming, you guys. We'll see you next week, which is Halloween. So come as you are. <laughs> okay.